My name is Stephen Sindoni. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Legends of Mount Shasta. In our broadcast today, we will discuss Dr. Doriel's theory from his book entitled Mysteries of Mount Shasta. With excerpts from Emily A. Frank's book entitled Mount Shasta's California Mystic Mountain from a chapter entitled Atlanteans in Mount Shasta. The Shining Peak rises in solitary splendor 14,162 feet into Northern California's blue sky. Incredibly, still another booklet came to light in which the author, Dr. M. Doriel, contradicts the legends that the mountain is inhabited by Lemurians. He states in a publication entitled Mysteries of Mount Shasta, which was published by the Brotherhood of the White Temple, Sedalia, Colorado, that the survivors of Atlantis inhabit the mountain. Dr. Dorio's theory goes along with the belief that Northern California is one of the most ancient lands in the world. But he claims that before the sinking of Lemuria and Atlantis, there already existed an Atlantean colony in Northern California, and that when Atlantis and Lemuria finally submerged, the survivors of Atlantis fled to the mountains, forming a colony inside Mount Shasta, where they live today. Although they have gradually decreased in number, Dr. Dorio claimed that there were 353 at the time of his visit to the Atlantean colony in 1931. As for the Lemurians, Dr. Dorio contends they built their civilizations in the South Pacific, the remains of which can be seen in the Caroline Islands. Their temples were placed atop the mountains which existed at that time, and the great basalt walls of the ancient structures still stand. These Lemurians reportedly built vast subterranean pleasure cities beneath the mountains, and they also attained a scientific and intellectual mastership beyond any modern achievements, harnessing nature's forces and utilizing the energies from the sun and the moon. Using this mastery freely, they were able to heat and light their subterranean cities. They also knew the secret of the atom. According to Dr. Doriel, however, the Atlanteans and the Lemurians engaged in a great war, after which the Lemurian royalty, priest kings and noblemen, withdrew in defeat to their underground pleasure palaces where they remain today in captivity. After their retreat, the Atlantean victors sealed the entrance and established an elaborate guard system which prohibits the Lemurians to ever escape their bondage. The Atlanteans, Dr. Doriel states, still reside in their colony beneath Mount Shasta and commute every three months by strange, cigar-shaped airships to that area in the South Pacific in order to check the sealed entrance of the imprisoned Lemurians, which believers say accounts for the appearances of spaceships in the Mount Shasta area. An interesting part of the booklet deals with Dr. Doriel's visit by invitation to the Atlantean city many miles beneath Mount Shasta. He explains in detail how the invitation came by and how he was transported from Topanga Canyon in Southern California to a place two-thirds up the side of Mount Shasta to a building fashioned from rose-colored stone. From this place, he and his companions were transported to the very top of the mountain, walking over to the center of enormous flat rock spanning five acres. They sank rapidly into the interior of the mountain through what seemed to be a sliding shaft of rock. After a five-mile descent, they reached a huge cavern situated between great pillars of unusual white metal, which he was told only existed in ancient Atlantis. Again descending into the depths of Mount Shasta seven more miles, they were brought to an enormous underground space extending 20 miles long and over 10,000 feet high. The entire area was brightly illuminated and the source seemed to emanate from a centered mass of glowing light. Dr. Dorio described the light as having unusual qualities which made his body tingle. It was said to be a concentrated blend of the sun and moon's rays. He was told that from three powerhouses hidden on the mountain, the Atlanteans periodically drew from the energies of the sun, moon, and cosmic rays. These rays are directed into the mountain to form 
the great glowing mass of energy which they use in numerous ways. According to the booklet, he was then taken to a small city about a mile and a half from the elevator which had borne him underground. This city, he wrote, was incredibly beautiful, with breathtaking white houses built of marble and other stone, architecturally so splendid that the most magnificent temples of ancient Greece were rough characters by comparison. The entire subterranean area was landscaped with lovely parks, gardens, and trees. Fruit trees bore fruit unlike any grown today. Dr. Doriel said they had preserved the plants, vegetables, and even some of the animals which had flourished on Atlantis thousands of years ago. Furthermore, they controlled different energies which caused the plants to grow perfectly and periodically condensed moisture when it was needed. Eating, it was explained to Dr. Doriel, was indulged in strictly for pleasure. They actually had no need for food because the same energy which supplied the light also supplied them with, in every vital breath they drew, the energy for existence. After they had shown how they could make from common earth any stone or metal they needed, and after it had been explained that they live approximately 150 years and then pass of their own free will transition, and finally, after exhibiting their amazing artistry in the design and weaving of clothing, the Atlanteans then escorted Dr. Doriel to the largest building, their temple. Their temple was primarily a temple of learning, according to Doriel. Occasionally, he was told, the Atlanteans bring in from the outer world certain chosen ones for instructions, and this temple beneath Mount Shasta is one of the two places on the North American continent that is used by the Great White Lodge, and it is one of the places where their work is directed to the outside world. Dr. Doriel concludes his booklet with the belief that these Elanian survivors are masters of all the laws of nature and that they work continuously together with chosen ones in the outside world in order to gradually awaken mankind to the awareness of the great mysteries behind matter and substance, indeed behind life itself. And so it is ever thus with this bewitching mountain, which seems to beckon not only the ancients, but also earthly humanitarians wishing to create a better universe. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast of Atlanteans in Mount Shasta.